welcome to another episode of Drinking with Geeks. I'm Roz. I'm Matt. And today we're going to be doing a review of a gin from our Beautist Distilleries, and it's blue. Yeah, this is a newish gin. Um, I don't know how new it is for the distillery, but it's definitely new to us. I was introduced to it when I was uh, hanging out at the liquor store, like I do, and um, well, I, get, I get paid to hang out there. You work um, there. Yeah. So... <laughs> I, I but at this point, yeah. I was just in there doing something else and hanging out, not actually at work. But, you know, I had a reason. I don't just, like, hang out at liquor stores too much. Um, Unless they have cool, different colored gin. Yeah. And the important thing is, I got shown this gin, and I was like, well, I'm just taking a bottle of that home, because that's really cool, and maybe we can review it on the show and see what it's like. So, here we are. Cool story, bro. And here it is. Get that up in there. Yeah. Move it up close so you can see. Oh, um, blue. Our Beautist Blue Gin. And there's a couple cool things about this one. I'll read off the back for you. A West Coast-inspired gin distilled with copious amounts of juniper, Ooh. coriander, locally grown hops, lavender, rosemary, and lemon verbena, amidst others. Steeped with butterfly pea flower, making for a brilliantly blue gin that transforms color with citrus or tonic. And that's really what the exciting thing about this was. Not just that it's blue, because I've seen blue gins around. Um, but uh, I wanted to try out this color change and see how it works. And it's we wanted be... to do it on camera for the first time with all of you. Unfortunately, we did last weekend. And um, turns out the audio was not great. So we're going to do it again now. And, you know... Maybe we can show a little bit of like us actually discovering it for the first time, and you can just be patient with the audio. Oh, oh it is it's changing! changing. Ah! That's crazy! But science is repetition, so... Yes, so it's time to do this again, and you can see and be amazed. Maybe you've already done this because you've had uh, butterfly pea flower tea, or uh, any other products that they might use that flower in. And then you've seen the color change happen uh, as the pH changes. So at the higher pH, this stuff's this lovely color of kind of a cobalt blue. And then as the pH goes down, it becomes more red as you get to the lower pH. So it goes kind of purple and then into the reds, potentially. But we'll why see Why don't what we show them and then we can tell them why it happened. Da -da 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 -da. And then squeeze in some lemon. Chow, chow. And look what? at that. That's crazy. Magic. That cool. Well, not magic. Science. That's one of my favorite lines from Archer. <laughs> There's enough room in the world for science and miracles. Oh. But not here. This is pure <laughs> science. science. If you've ever had a lab class or you've ever used a pH indicator strip or anything like that, there's lots of different indicators out there that are color changing compounds um, based on pH. In this case, we've got a really nice change from blue to purple. I just took a sip of it with the lemon, but I was wondering if um, what we should actually taste and talk about first, backtracking a little bit, is this glass of unaltered yeah. gin. Oh, that's a good side by side. That's should we a good get up change. a little closer? Yeah, look at that. Ooh, science. So delicious, sexy. delicious. This is like science. movie science that involves colors, because real science doesn't usually, well, yeah. except with pH changes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's where the prettiest colors happen. If you're doing a titration with a pH indicator in there, yeah. Speaking of titrations, we've got excitement due in a minute or okay. two. Oh, thanks, Freddy, foreshadowing. Who is this? Let's taste the. Right, yeah. taste the regular one. Blue gin from our Beautist Distillery. I like it. It's. Feels like there's a butt in there. Um, it's a bit floral for me. I'm not a fan of floral flavors. Say that five times fast. I'm not a fan of floral flavors. 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 Okay. How about I'm not a fantastic fan of floral flavors. I'm not a, no, no, I, it's, we're wasting time. <laughs> I'm gonna try the gin. I have to say first off the top though, I love that this still has a really intense juniper flavor or smell. Yes. Aroma. Really intense juniper aroma. 
Yeah, although it is quite floral, it still mm. tastes like gin, and it's actually a pretty intense gin. It doesn't taste quite like anything else in my gin cabinet. I like it. No. Okay. Don't you don't drink up all of that. We're gonna need it. Have a taste with lemon. Oh, the smell is much less uh, juniper forward. The fellow that introduced me to this, uh, that from the liquor store. Says that he likes it. He brings it home and just like squeezes lemon into it and just drinks it like that. Like doesn't even bother oh. with the tonic or it's anything so else. It's so good. It's so sour, but something about the floral, um, you still experience a sweetness with it. It's very, it's surprisingly balanced considering you just squeezed a bunch of lemon into here. And it's got this heat that comes along with the alcohol that mm -hmm. it's really nice. You may remember when I read the back of it that it said it changed color with lemon and tonic. So... We hearkened back to our days as chemistry undergrads and, well, no, not chemistry undergrads. That sounds like we were undergrads in chemistry, which she sort of was. I definitely was not. Not a chemistry fan, but I did take some chemistry courses. And in those courses, you determine pH and shit by titrating things. I think you actually determined how much a... You determine some other it was a calculation based it's a whole thing it's fine you're you're so close it's great love it you know what now we're gonna do some of that let's add a little bit of tonic into here make sure we're kind of in here and for those wondering we did actually calibrate to some extent our eyedropper we took out a little scale and some water and confirmed that there is in fact roughly one milliliter of water in a full squeeze of the eyedropper and that on average there's about 20 drops that you can get out of that. So we're saying 0.05 milliliters in so, one squeeze with a very large margin of error. <laughs> uh, you can't, can't quite see. It has changed to a slight purple color. It's not as dramatic with uh, the bit of tonic that we've added as the lemon. Um, and even if we add more tonic, which we sort of, ooh, let me just get up in here, which we sort of tested out last time when we tried this, um, it's not going to be as dramatic. You're not going to go as low pH as you did by adding uh, the lemon, which tells you a little bit about this type of compounds that are in here and these pigments. And you do get to a lovely, if we can kind of see that purple color. Yep. You also haven't added nearly as much tonic as you would if you were making a gin and tonic. Which... I'll, I'll show you soon. <laughs> yeah. Reach off screen to the magic bar and out comes a gin and tonic made with this. And you can see it is quite a lovely light kind of violet color. There we go. It's a beautiful Ooh. summer drink. Uh, we, we put a little bit of uh, lemon peel in for the garnish. Just it's sort of unspiraled and not quite as pretty now um alas i think that uh if i was serving this in a restaurant i'd probably do like a really crazy garnish that only a restaurant would or not a restaurant a cocktail bar would do or someone who's you know like dried out. flowers or mm -hmm. something that you probably wouldn't do at home Ooh, but pansies would be really pretty and like a sprig of something that Ooh, sticks nice. out the top like baby's breath mm -hmm. or and this then like is a an beautiful flower. summer gin and tonic i've added the arbutus Gin that we have here, the Blue Gin, and I have added Angostura bitters as I am want to do with my GNTs or any bitters of your choice, but that's how I prepared this one today. It is super refreshing, an excellent addition to the summer cocktail series that we've sort of been working our way through, so I highly recommend this as a go to for you for your patios this summer. <laughs> oh, that's really good. He's not even into, into GNTs that much. No. It tastes surprisingly sweet once the tonic and stuff is in it. Well, tonic does have sugar, so... Yeah, but tonic doesn't normally taste very sweet on its own. No, I think it's something to do with the way the floral gin pairs with it. Yeah. It just brings out a, a sweetness to the combination of those flavors. It's sort of like when you add the lemon to the gin, it, it tastes a little bit sweeter than you'd expect just based on changing the pH and adding some of the citrus sugars. Yeah. So is there anything else about anthocyanins you'd like to tell us before we wrap up? I think we should talk a little bit about them. Maybe we can put up some either a picture of a structure or something about uh, this class of pigments. They've got some aromatic rings. 
as you'd expect from the fact that they are colored compounds and then that the color change happens based on pH. Interestingly, they can also be used as environmental pH indicators. Uh, you know that this was a, a flower, the butterfly... Butterfly pea. Butterfly pea. <laughs> uh, but some hydrangeas as well have the same class of pigments in them. And so if they grow in a soil that is a higher pH, the flower petals will be blue. And if they grow in a soil with a lower pH, they'll have red or pink or purple uh, flower petals based on the pH of the soil. So that's kind of cool. And if you want to read even more about these pigments, you can read a bit about the anthocyanidins that are paired with the sugar molecules which make this pigment up. And like we've already discussed, they're a blue color at the high pH. And then as the pH goes down, they transition purple into a red. And that's sort of the range that they go in. But there's lots of other pH indicators out there. Final thoughts. As this is a review, I feel like I should give some sort of a rating to this exciting gin that I'm happy to add to my liquor cabinet. Yep. Yep. I would like to give it um, 4.5 purple petals. So four point four and a half out of five. Four and a half out of five. Purple yeah. petals. Purple petals. Okay. I think for me, because I'm not a floral fan, I would probably only give it, my personal rating would be like a seven out of 10, but objectively, I would give it more like an eight. Uh, well, okay, now I have to nine. correct to a 10, so I'm giving it a nine out of 10. I mean, we could have left it to people to correct a 10 out of their own. You like giving scores out of five, I like giving scores out of 10 and sticking with even numbers. It's, uh, you know, we're just gonna make it overly complicated for the public and they'll always get two reviews that don't like match the same scale. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like a bad publication. So we'll say four and a half out of five, final score, less if you don't like flour, but uh, still a pretty darn great gin, regardless. Science. Cheers. <laughs>